Morning, ladies and gentlemen, Berto Worry here, trusting that you are doing well, my sister, my brother. So how was your weekend? Did you have a super awesome weekend? I hope and trusting that you did. So may I ask you, did you take time out to study? Remember, we must, must study the word. And we know it is so late on planet Earth, and the solution is Jesus Christ. And he state, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. And that is John 3, 16. Let us go ahead and bow for prayer. Father God, I thank you, Father God, for this beautiful day, Father God. Father God, right now, I ask you that you will decrease me so that you will be increased, Father God. Allow your Holy Spirit, Father God, to take full control. I thank you in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, scripture reading is coming from Psalms 13, verses 5. Psalms 13, verses 5. And it says... But I have trusted in thy mercy. My soul shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will go on and read 6 as well. I will sing unto the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and the doing of his words. So we are still in chapter 5. Uh, let me move this over. Hold on, let me move that over. Chapter 5 of The Truth About Angels, and this is by Ellen G. White, just like um, Our Steps to Christ. This is one of her writings as well. And this is How to Know Him Better. And this is uh, my goal, is for us to have a, a closer, deeper relationship. It's the same information in these booklets. It's just that they have a different cover. And this is just a little bit different size, if you look. These are, look like a, almost like a pocket ones. So these are her writings. And then also, I th believe every home should have the great controversy. My goodness, it tells you from the beginning, uh, talking about uh, Martha Luther, John Hust, and all these great men of God, and what they did in order to help um, the cause of God. And it, it talks about from the beginning all the way to the end of this world, what's going to take place. So this is a good book, my sister and brother, The Great Controversy. And it all started in heaven. And this is the same author of all those three books. Actually, uh, yeah, three books. And then this one here as well. And then also the devotion that we uh, covered. It's from her writings. So we are going into part two. Uh, of Satan's plan to cause man's fall and um, I'm going to go ahead from Friday I'm going to pick up the last the last paragraph of last Friday and then continue with our topic today and it says Satan declared that he could prove to the world which God has created and to the heavenly intelligence that it was an impossibility to keep the law of God. Here is part two. God assembled the angelic host to take measure to avert the threatening evil. It was decided in a heaven's court for angels to visit Eden and warn Adam that he was in danger from the foe, meaning the enemy. Accordingly, two angels sped on their way to visit our first parents. Heavenly messengers opened to them, Adam and Eve, the history of Satan's fall and his plot for their destruction, unfolding more fully the nature of the divine government which the prince of evil was trying to overthrow. The angels warned them to be on their guard against the devices of Satan for his effort to ensnare them would be unwearing while, meaning untiring, while they were obedient to God, the evil one could not harm them, for if, for if need be, every angel in heaven will be sent to help. Let me go back. Let me go back. While they were obedient to God, the evil one could not harm them, for if need be, every angel in heaven would be sent to their help. If they steadfastly repelled 
his first insinuation, insinuation, they would be as secure as the heavenly messenger. But should they once yield to temptation, their nature would become so deprived that in themselves they would have no power or disposition to resist Satan. And if you have the book, uh, Patriarch and Prophet, is page 52 and 53. The angels caution Eve not to separate from her husband in her employment, for she might be brought in contact with this fallen foe, meaning the enemy. If separated from each other, they would be in greater danger than if both were together. The angels charged them to closely follow the instructions God had given them in reference to the tree of knowledge, for in the perfect obedience they were safe, and this fallen foe could have access to them only at the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So, so the warning was, the angels cautioned Eve not to separate from her husband in her employment. Remember, they were the ones that were tending the gardens. Okay, so it said, Adam and Eve assured the angels that they should never transgress the express commandment of God, for it was the highest privilege to do his will. The angels united with Adam and Eve in holy strain of harmonious music. And as they sung, plead forth from the blissful Eden, Satan heard the sound of their strain of joyful adoration to the Father and Son. And as Satan heard it, his envy, hatred, malignity increased and he expressed his anxiety to his followers to incite them, Adam and Eve, to disobedient. And you can find this in the Spirit of Prophecy, uh, I guess book one, uh, page 34 and 35. So that's concludes my topic uh, today, part two of Satan's Plans to cause man's fall so on tomorrow tuesday we're going to go into satan speaks to eve through a serpent okay so they did did they this did they obey god so we're going to find whether or not they heed god's uh, warning uh, we're going to do that tomorrow so may i share with you my devotion i always ask that question huh but it's very polite right it's very polite I have this water bottle, and you know what? I don't really care for it. It was working at one point, but then it seemed like, I don't know. I don't really like it. And you know what happened? The things that I don't like, it eventually ends up in the trash. Okay, so here we go. And it says, follow Christ's example of sacrifice. Follow Christ's examples of sacrifice. And it state, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. And this is coming from Matthew chapter 11, verses 29. Let us bow for prayer. Father God, I thank you, Father God, that you have not left me here by myself, Father God. Allow your Holy Spirit to continue to take full control, Father God. And I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. It says, those who would at least be receiving into heaven as members of the royal family must here give themselves body, soul, and spirit to the service of him who paid the price of their redemption. All that we have and are belongs to the Lord. Ye are not your own, the apostle declare, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. And you can find this in our first Corinthians chapter six, verses 19 and 20. Have you consecrated yourself wholly to the Lord? 
Can he use you as a vessel unto honor? Are you faithfully acting your part in his cause? To every man, God has given his work. He expects every believer to cooperate with him in the work of soul saving. When he cause, no, when his cause is suffering for means, how can anyone set a price on his service, refusing to take up the cross daily and practice self-denial for Christ's sake? The fulfillment of the promise that we shall be joint heir with Christ rest upon our willingness to deny self. When Christ takes possession of his kingdom, it will be those who on this earth has followed him in self-denial and sacrifice who will receive the reward of eternal life. Christ calls to sacrifice and unreserved surrender, meaning crucifixions of self. In order to obey this call, we must have unquestioning faith in him as the perfect example. And we must have a clear realization that we are to represent him to the world. Those who work for Christ are to work in his line. They are to live his life. His call to unreserved surrender is to be to them supreme. They are to allow no earthly ties or interest to prevent them from giving him his homage of their hearts and the service of their lives. Earnestly and untiringly, they are to labor with God to save perishing souls from the power of the tempter. Those who are thus connected with Christ learn constantly of him passing through the successive stages of progression in the Christian experience. Difficulties and perplexity comes to them, that they might learn more perfectly the will and the way of Christ. But they prayed and believed, and by exercise, their faith increased. Let me repeat that. But they prayed and believed, and by exercise, their faith increased. Take my yoke upon you, Christ says, as in human nature he lived and worked upon this earth. Constantly he wore the yoke of submission, meeting the difficulties that human beings must meet, bearing the trials that they must bear. The enemy will constantly assault us as he assaulted Christ, bringing against us strong temptation. But for everyone, there is a way of escape. Let me repeat these last two. So it is the enemy's job, it says the enemy, will continually assault us as he assaulted Christ, bringing against us strong temptation. But for everyone, there is a way of escape. So that concludes my, my devotion, my sister, my brother. Follow Christ's examples of sacrifice, okay? So we have to be a self-denial individual in order to receive eternal life. So if we stating that we are doing our own will, I'm going to do what I want to do. Guys, I'm a big girl now, my sister, my brother, then you will not make it in. Because as big girls, we have to surrender and become that child-like uh, character, a child-like that when someone uh, comes to you and tells you, well, you know what, sis, um, you know, you need to do better in this area, you won't get offended, right? Because remember, we're all here to help one another to reach a higher level. And we are, how would you say, we are ambassadors for Christ. We are missionary. And as a missionary, we still need to be uh, counseled to. People still need to come to us and said, you know, sis, you know, you could do this better or you need to do this or whatever, whatever. And don't take offense. Just think about it as, um, as a way of increasing your talents, getting better in within your craft that you, uh, remember, we are a missionary. We are supposed to be the example of Jesus, right? So as the example, remember, Jesus went to his father 
and his father gave him the strength that he needs. So we have to surrender our life, go to the Lord, ask him to forgive us. And then once we ask him to forgive us, not only do he forgive, but we, we have to do the part of forsaking whatever that temptation is. And whatever somebody says, well, Satan, he made me do it. No, my sister and brother, it's something that you w want wanted to do and he just put it in front of you and put it on a on a beautiful plate and he offered it to you and it's up to you to reject it based on your studying that's why we have to stay so close connected with the lord so when the temptation comes we will be so connected that we'll see that is a temptation for us to fall and we decided to go the other way and ask the lord for strength to go through it right God is not going to, how would you say, take it from us. Uh, because remember, whatever we go through is to make to make us stronger. So we don't want to ask him to take it. We want him to, act, to, to give us the strength to go through whatever it is that he placed in our hands. So remember, at the end of the day, everything we do goes back to the Lord. It's supposed to give all praise and honor to him. So may I share, uh, do my hymn, uh, do my hymn. Let me drink some water. Okay. I know whom I have believed. I know not why God wondrous grace to me he has made known, nor why unworthy Christ in love redeemed me for his own, for his own. But I know whom I have believed and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. I know not how his saving fate to me he did impart, nor how believing in his word wrought peace within my heart. But I know whom I have believed and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. I know not how the Spirit moves, convincing man of sin, revealing Jesus through the word, creating faith in him. But I know in whom I have believed, and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Here's the last verse. I know not when my Lord may come at night or noonday fair, nor if I walk the vault with him or meet him in the air. But I know whom I have believed, and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. I know whom I have believed, my sister, my brother. So we have to know beyond of a shadow of doubt whom we believe. And by the, having the belief, we have the faith, my sister and brother. So we praying, we have the faith, we are fasting, and we are just moving on and reaching higher and higher. Yes, the Christian journey is not an easy one. But nevertheless, my sister and brother, it's going to be all worth it in the end. So if you are having challenges, maybe health issues, maybe financial issues, maybe a relationship issue, maybe issues on the job, maybe issues, whatever issues, whatever it is, my sister and brother, God knows it. He sees it, my sister and brother. So you have to do your part. Pray and ask him to give you the strength, right? to go through whatever it is that he has placed on your plate today. And in the process of you giving him the praise, the honor, and glory, what that does for, I don't know, for you, but what it does for me, it keeps my eye off of the issue. And I'm, as I'm giving him praise, it seems like the, what I'm going through is just so small. It is so small compared to what Jesus went through for us. And remember, God the Father, I don't even have that part right now. I, I usually keep it. God the Father has measure 
what you were going through. He has measured it. He knows that you can pass the test as long as you are faithful and you rely totally on him. And so as, that's a huge bird. So as he um, placed it in your lap, my sister and brother, as he placed whatever trials, anxiety, health issues, whatever it is in your lap, he knows that you can pass the test. I remember, everything that we go through is for a reason. You might not know it right now, right? Just like Job, he never knew what, what, why he had to go through what he did. But at the end of the day, you're either going to end up with a testimony from out of that burden that you were, that you said burden was lifted at the cross. As the Lord lifts your burden to my sister and brother, you will be giving him the testimony. So when you go to church, you will have a testimony. When your friends come by or someone is calling you, you have a testimony. And you know what? Sometimes that person that's calling you, it could be that person that's going through what you had just passed through. Isn't that beautiful how God does things? And sometimes what we're going through is not for us, but for us to give God the glory. Maybe somebody else might be going, it, going through that in the future, and they will be calling on you to say, my sister, how did you do? How did you come through that? My brother, how did you come through that? So as I said, the Lord has weighed everything you're going through. He has weighed, he's measured it. He knows that you can pass the test. And each one of us, as we call ourselves Christians, ambassadors for the kingdom, we will be going through hard times. We have to go through it because God sees something in us that is not like him. So in order for us, for him to refine us, we have to go through the fire. You know, we got to become that, that perfect vessel for him. And so as we going through the storms of life, do not complain, do not murmur, do not bicker. What you need to do, you need to just, if you want to put a little bit of sweetener in that cup, Put patient endurance and prayer. So put some pep in your step. Patient endurance and prayer. It's your pep that you need in your um, in your bitter cup, and that will kind of make it a little sweeter, sweetener for your bitter cup as we go through these difficult days of Earth history. And remember, God's children always go through difficulties because. You have to, God has to make sure that you are willing to do everything that he had called you to do. So just my sister and brother, just remember, think about Job, read the story of Job, right? So remain faithful until the end. So get ready, get ready. Jesus is coming soon. Let us bow for prayer. Father God, I thank you, Father God, for this message, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that you did not leave me here by myself, Father God. I thank you, Father God, right now that you're blowing this wind and you're cooling off the valley. And I thank you, Father God. Thank you for the birds that I can see, the birds that I can hear, the squirrels up in the tree, the animals that you have surrounded me with, Father God. I thank you, Father God, and I thank you for my sister, my brother, that stopped by here today and the ones who stopped by here in the future father god you know our individual need and we thank you father god that you have already provided a solution all we have to do is continue praying believing and have faith father god it state that if we have the faith at the size of a mustard seed father god we can remove the mountain father god so father god we ask you father for the love for the power for the peace for the patience that we need to go through these last days father god Father God, now take these empty vessels, Father God. If we have done anything that was not pleasing or acceptable, Father God, we ask you that you forgive us and make us whiter than snow. Then fill us, Father God, with the love, the power, with the peace, with the patience. Father God, with the kindness that we need, Father God, with the brotherly love that we need for one another. We thank you, Father God. We thank you. We love you. We love you. In Jesus' name I have prayed. Amen and amen. Okay, my sister and brother, can you do me a favor? So if this was a blessing to you, can you hit the like button? Can you hit the comment? What are you doing today? I'm doing some studying. Um, I'm just doing, 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 doing. So then you can hit the share button. And then you can follow me over on YouTube under Burdell Warrior. While you're there, hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell notification. And I thank you, thank you, thank you for helping me grow my YouTube channel. So there's a wealth of information there, my sister, my brother. And then also if you scroll down on the links, I have a, a wealth of information. Um, I got some products there as well that you can click on and to, um, to help boost your immune system. 
or even uh, stuff if you have problem skins and all that stuff. So my sister, there's a wealth of information there as well in my on my YouTube channel. And if those of you that probably stopped by for the first time, you can also scroll down on Facebook and you see some of my other um, the, the videos there as well. Because uh, some people might say I don't have YouTube and some people might say I don't have Facebook. But, you know, so you got Facebook or you got YouTube. So thank you, thank you, thank you, my sister and brother. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to stop by here today. May God continue to richly bless you. Overflow your cup. I tell you, don't you love the overflow? God has a God is, has a way to overflow our cup. But if you're looking for the overflow, you will find it. But if you're looking for one of those people that you complain, 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 you're not going to see it. So glory, glory, glory to God, glory to God. So, but before you go, may I have me? I have a hug. May I have a hug? So here we go. One, two, three. Thank you so much, my sister and brother. I love you, love you, love you. I appreciate you. Until tomorrow, be blessed and take care.